So during COVID, I set out to break the world record for Toad Highlands on the N64. And I'm now tied for third in the world and uh, have gotten that score a couple of times. And I'm close, so maybe today's the day. Nice shot. I grew up playing a lot of N64 with my brothers. That was pretty much the competitive outlet of choice if we were inside. Instead of actually waiting for the game to end, my oldest brother would be so mad about losing that he would just run up and he'd switch off the Nintendo and then just walk out of the room. So you didn't get the satisfaction of actually winning. And so we dubbed that the, uh, the Zimmerman Abort. I don't think there's anything that I'm going into that I'm not making it into a game or making it about winning or losing, which is a blessing and a curse. You know, it's helpful when you're playing sports and do it for a living, but I'm sure it's really annoying for, for Sally and other people sometimes when they're like, why can't you just chill? I mean, it, it is impressive. I don't know if I, if I think it's worthy of, you know, maintaining the third in the world record every day, but yeah, it is impressive. Don't let her fool you, she likes the N64 too. That's just so poor. That's just, this is what we call the Zerman Abort. Walker Zimmerman is one of the league's most dominant players. Strong, instinctive, but his greatest edge as a player may be his fierce competitiveness. You see it come out passionately during matches and in just about everything else he does. I usually don't get angry very often, pretty patient. And then the side of me that sometimes comes out on the field is like a little bit more animalistic. Like if I get angry at like a ref or something, like right getting a bad challenge it'll just like kind of make me snap a little bit sometimes so i haven't had too many moments honestly with nashville that i can think of where i feel like i've like snapped um i think i mean there are actually a couple that come to mind but um that's the side that i think only comes out in sport and only on rare occasions the first goal the first game that whole environment at nissan stadium there's just something special about playing that first game for the city in mls and then it was kind of unspoken between my wife and I, like I had a really good feeling that something was gonna happen. Ended up, you know, getting that goal. And we both kind of knew, like we, we knew it was gonna happen, uh, but we didn't talk about it till afterwards. You wanna feel valued and respected and I think Nashville from the beginning, ever since I got traded, really did that. You know, they kind of backed up everything that they said they were gonna do and were consistent with it. And so it was very easy for us to, to feel that from them. And I think they know how much I value being in Nashville, being a part of this team. And so it was kind of like a, a good fit and then it was just about making it work. And uh, I think we came together and did something historic and we both walked away feeling like it was a good deal for both sides. We have a very good locker room, a good buildup of both youth and experience. I mean, Dax has probably more caps than everyone else on the team combined, so it's great to have guys like that in your locker room that have been through it. And for me now, year 10, I know, you know I'm kind of one of those guys who it's expected from. It's a job that I love, I relish in that. Um, trying to inspire guys to want to win every single day in training and games. And I think we have a good group who responds to that and also kind of embodies that mentality. Four consecutive MLS Best 11 selections, back-to-back -back MLS Defender of the Year. Walker has made a name for himself in Nashville, and he's also made a real home here. And right away, I remember we heard the call, and they're like, yeah, we decided to trade you. We got an offer we couldn't refuse. And I'm like holding on to every word, like, OK, well, where are you trading me to? And my wife's like, because I was like, I'm getting traded. And uh, she's like, well, to where? And at that moment, John Thornton, the GM, said Nashville. And I was like, Nashville? Like, thank goodness, could have been a lot worse. And like, immediately all of a sudden, you're starting to put all those things in your head of like proximity to home. It's like an expansion team again, get that experience. And then obviously got to talk to Mike Jacobs and John Ingram and, and got to get a sense of the culture. And I was like, man, this is gonna be really good for us. 
Initially, it was very much shock and surprise, and honestly, we were pretty sad because we were just so happy with where we were at the time. But then we were very thankful it was to Nashville of all places. And then now, looking back in retrospect, we're so thankful, especially because we have a family. It's a lot homier here, a lot easier to kind of put roots down. I started playing organized soccer at four years old. Uh, my two older brothers played. So we grew up always at the soccer fields, at the basketball courts, the baseball fields. And I can throw up that his head. Doop. Doop. And so I, I don't know if I was necessarily playing soccer when I was his age, but I was certainly in and around the action as the youngest child, probably just crawling all over my brothers and trying to play whatever, whatever sport they were playing or do any activity that they were doing. So I definitely get a little kick out of him being pretty athletic too. But whatever he chooses to do, I'm sure he'll be pretty good at it. Yeah. Good job. Look at you go. It's a daily challenge, balancing home life with the pressure of the league. But Walker's family keeps him both happy and humble, even as he stepped into the bright lights of the world stage. I'll never forget, Bruce called me in December. It was following uh, a good year in 2016 for me individually, for Dallas as a team, winning two trophies. And uh, he's like, hey, thought you had a great year. I want to call you to camp. And I was like, awesome. Like, thank you so much. Can't wait. Got my first cap against Jamaica in Chattanooga, which was cool, because then my family is mainly from Atlanta and friends, so I had a lot of people come to the game. And yeah, that was like kind of a first check in terms of all the national team goals I had set for myself. I feel like the most emotional part of a game for me when he plays for the national team is when they all walk out for the national anthem. You just realize like that this moment is the culmination of the past like 11 years of all the highs and the lows and all the things that we've gone through to get to this point. I feel like it's just gonna be so emotional and so exciting and I just cannot wait. I told him he has to look up and wave at me. Yeah. <laughs> you can't forget. Can't forget, I won't forget. Yeah. Ever since, you know, becoming a professional, the goal is obviously national team and as a result of that, playing in a World Cup. A lot of people are like, you know, can you even believe that you, this is happening? I'm like, yeah, like I, I can because this is like what I've pictured doing my entire life. And, you know, someone has to be out there. Like, I want it to be me. I want to have that responsibility and to help out the team and help out the country and inspire a bunch of young athletes the same way that I was inspired. The World Cup in itself, like, it provides so many opportunities for players. You know, you're playing against the best athletes in the world, best players in the world, and it's a measuring stick. I believe in myself, I believe in the team and the group that we have, that we can have a very good run and ultimately see if I have what it takes, and, and that's something I'm excited to find out.